Okay, here we have the Life Safety Power Mercury board configuration. Um, this is a four door kit. I've got it pre wired, and I kind of want to show you how I went about wiring this bad boy. Um, here's your LP1502. This is the main controller, it's a two door main board. Here's the MR52, which is the two door daughter board, basically, that runs off of the main board via RS-485. Uh, but let's start with the main power. Um, here's your main power board. Don't worry about this just yet. Um, I'm going to show you how to wire this thing for mag locks, which is tends to be the most uh, confusing. So anyway, off of your main power board, you really do nothing at this stage. Here's your B100 board. This is your power to your boards. So th these terminals will be empty. Go ahead and get you some crimp on terminals here. Connect that to conductor wire. I've got it run down. And if you notice, I've tried to dress it in a little bit. It comes with these little standoff brackets. I've used a standoff bracket and one of these little toilet bowl looking things. So I've got that basically down here with the standoff bracket, tie wrap. Try to keep it in order. But anyway, you got your terminal. This is your main power output. This is going to be 24 volts DC out of the box. You can change it to 12. Um, but why? You don't need to. Make that 24. Leave, that, leave, leave this alone. 24 volts coming out. Okay. I've got it run down all the way to over here and into the power input on my LP1502. Your LP1502, this terminal here, you've got your VN and your ground. Okay, the VN and ground is going to be your plus and minus, like I said, from these two terminals. Okay, your output feeds your input. Simple enough. Um, you're going to loop that. Right? You're going to loop that V in and ground up here. When I say loop, it just means tie another uh, two conductor to it. Take that up here to your LP, I'm sorry, your MR52. Okay? And it's going to plug into your V in and ground. Don't plug it into your V in and V out or you'll pop a fuse, which I did earlier. So yes, that needs to go to VN and ground. And that's what I've done here. So that gives me power to my boards. For communication, we use RS-485. That's simple enough. That comes off of, let me see, is that it? Yes, that comes off of this board right there. You've got your RS-485 TR plus. TR minus. Don't worry about the ground. We only need two cables or two conductors. Oh, I pulled the Phoenix plug off by accident, but that's okay. So you're going to take your TR plus, TR minus, right on up here to TR plus, TR minus on this board. You can see that. I don't even have to pull that off. There's your communication. There's your power. These boards are ready to rock. Okay. Now... Let's talk about inputs and outputs. Uh, obviously, we've got our readers here. Reader 1, Reader 2. Reader 1, Reader 2. Um, you can program that any way you want. I just try to keep it logical. Make uh, the controller Reader 1, Reader 2. And the MR52 be Reader 3, Reader 4. But it really depends on your installation. We're not really getting there at this point. So going back to your main controller board... I've got all your inputs on this side and your outputs over here. Now your outputs don't feed your locks. Your outputs feed this board. This board has its own inputs and outputs. These inputs trigger these outputs. They're fuse protected. This is the way you want to do it. There's a lot of jumpers on here that we need to pay attention to also. I'll go over that in a minute. So. Going back to your main board, here are your outputs. Output one, output two. This is a mag lock. 
In my mind, mag locks are normally closed. You can program it any way you want. Normally closed, because the door is normally closed, it's normally energized with power. So, normally closed, runs over here, output 1 goes into input 1, output 2 goes into input 2, and then up here to your MR52, I've got output 3, output 4, same sort of situation, normally closed and common. Run down to this bad boy here, input 3 and input 4. These are the outputs that are triggered based off of these inputs, which are determined by these outputs. Makes perfect sense, right? Okay. Now, you need to look at these jumpers. These jumpers determine what these outputs do. What's nice and convenient is right here on the panel itself, it will show you how those jumpers should be. In this case, and in most cases with a mag lock, with a mag lock, we're going to be doing a normally closed contact input with FAI, fire alarm input. With a mag lock, you should have a fire alarm because the fire alarm trips the mag locks need to open. So this tells me that my red jumper needs to be on one, my blue jumper needs to be on one, my black jumpers need to be on two, the yellow one doesn't matter, and the white one needs to be on two. There's a gotcha here. I'll show you the gotcha. Position two is on the left. So when it says Normally closed contact input with fire alarm input. A and B are position one. A and B are position one. See that? I've got all four of them that way. Position one, position one, position one, position one. My red and blues are all on one. C and E, position two. Those are hidden back here. Those are actually on bottom, that's logical. C and E, position two, on all four of them. The white one is also position two. The white one is position two. So back over here, just like the black one, the white one is position two. In this case, the yellow doesn't matter. This is properly strapped. Okay? So, we're very close. There's only a couple of other things that we need to hook up here. One is the tamper. The tamper is this guy here. It's just kind of hanging free. And you run it to the LP1502. And it's got a TMP. Is that what it's called? Yeah, a TMP and a ground. So it doesn't matter which one goes which. There's two conductors. Put one on TMP. Put one on ground. Stick it in there. And there's your tamper. Okay? The other thing that we hook up is on the main power board... It's your system fault or your AC fault, okay? In here, and that's in there pretty good. You've got this AC fault. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of blurry. Uh, normally closed and common, AC fault, okay? Take your two conductor. Sorry, get that back in there. Take, your two, take a two conductor from normally closed and common from your AC fault, run it all the way around, and up here to, oops, where does that go? Yeah, right in there. That goes up here to your fault and ground, the bottom two. What that will do is let the software know when you lose AC power and you're just running on battery, it'll trip off an alarm. Okay, we do have a battery connector. It comes pre-wired on the main power board. You don't have to do anything with this. The only thing you do have to do is run your batteries to it. So coming off of the panel, you've got red and black. Very simply, you put red to red on one battery, black to black on the other battery. I've got this connected right now. And it comes with a 
orange jumper to tie the batteries together, put them in series, give you 24 volts. These are 12 volt power supplies. I mean, 12 volt batteries. Okay. From there, you are ready to go. The only other thing I have is the fire alarm input. Uh, the system comes with a little diagram that shows you how the fire alarm input works. Nine times out of 10, we're gonna do a normally open activation where you strap these two together and then these two are your normally open contacts. So what that means, and this is on that, on that green fire alarm input, the green fire alarm input, the middle two will go to the fire alarm and these two kind of jump together. And I've done that here where I've jumped those two together and I've got these two coming off ready to go to the fire alarm. I'm just going to short them together to show you what happens when a fire alarm trips. So this board is ready to go. I'm ready to turn it on. And let's do that and see if we can smoke this thing. Oh, it does not come with a power cord. You got to make your own. So get you one of these. It comes with a PC. Cut your end off like I did here. And just go color for color. Coming off your main power supply. Then plug it in. When you plug it in, it comes to life. When it comes to life like that, you know you're good. These blue lights signify 24 volts. These blue lights signify 24 volts. Since it's normally closed, I've got power on these guys right now. Right? Those outputs, based on this light, has 24 volts on it. So here's your switched power. So when somebody swipes a card or triggers a request to exit, it'll click this input to force this output to stop providing power. When it's blinking, I mean, when it stops providing power, this LED will blink. I'll show you that in a minute too. These terminals here are constant 24 volts. You can use this to feed the power to your motion sensor. It's unswitched power. It's always got 24 volts on it. This is switched power. It's got 24 volts on it only when it's supposed to have 24 volts on it, which is normally all the time in a mag lock. All right, so just to see if the fire alarm actually works, if I short these two together, boom, that just killed power to all my mag locks. And it also created a fault in the system to let you know that something has happened. Okay, as soon as I let go of that, we're back to power and everything's happy. That's how you wire it up. Now we'll move on to the hardware.